Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to build a papaya classifier. To classify these three stages. Okay, here are the class labels. 0, 1, and 2. When we compute the prediction later. Okay, this is a real agricultural use case. And then this data set is not too, it's uh, actually pretty small. So it's not going to take up much space on your computer downloading it. Okay, so import the file, file1 equals, and then directory from file1. If you guys want to change the target size, you have to change the input shape down there as well, as well as the shape for prediction. Bat size 12 and 8, categorical training. Remember, there's only one folder, so we have to create a validation folder with a validation split of 33%. There's three classes, 201 images for the first, 99 for the validation. Okay. Dense 3 because there's three classes. If this were binary, this would be dense 1. Activation ReLU for vanishing gradient descent prevention. Input shape. Input shape from the target shape, remember? And then 3. ReLU, same thing. And padding valid strides of 2. And pool size and kernel size go down until we hit convolution 16. Dense 3 after flatten. Remember the rule of thumb? Also, the rule of thumb is never to go above 20 epochs if you can prevent it. And then softmax for multi-categorical. This would be sigmoid if this were binary. And then atom or SGD, it doesn't matter. Categorical cross-entropy, categorical accuracy. Okay, and I felt the need to only go down to 16 instead of 8 and 4 convolutions. Because... Depending on the images, uh, it can do more damage than good. And we'll, although this one is tougher to train because the images are so close uh, in appearance and there's only 200 to teach it and 99 for the validation. But we're about to teach it in five epochs and get all five correct. Okay, this is actually good. You know how this is uh, really further away from one? When you see this E, that means that it's nearly um, nearly infinity, basically. So um, that is extremely far away from one whenever you see the E right there. Categorical accuracy is 100%. The loss is the only one that's not too good. The other one is 60%. But it got all of them correctly. <clears throat> You can also save your papaya model is a uh, H5 file right there. Okay, 384 <laughs> is the input shape and the target shape, right? Okay. And then we're going to re read the image, CV2 IM read color, reshape the array, and resize. We're going to predict, prepare the image, print. There are the sequences of arrays. There's three. <clears throat> Okay, and then uh, that's to uh, show the image with matplotlib. Okay, now um, the class label is 1. Okay, I'm about to show you guys. Okay, here we go. This is this folder. Sorry, it's the most thing closes. Okay, so zero, one, and two. As you can see, as you can see, partially unmature, one. Because zero, one, right? Now let's go down to mature. That is zero. NP argmax, zero. Okay. Now let's look at the other one. Two. Unmature. Because remember, unmature. So you see how these look fairly similar? And it, we taught, with this model, we taught it to teach it the difference. And we did in five epochs. 
Okay. Now, guys, uh, as you notice in my videos, sometimes I'll go down to uh, eight and four convolutions. But I did not feel the need. And uh, remember, this would be, if this were binary, this would be binary cross entropy, obviously. And it would be um, accuracy. And uh, dense one. And if this were multi-categorical, same down here, only I would put how many classes and how many classes. Depending on how many pictures, that neural network can take, a, and pictures and epochs, that neural network can take a long time to train, the convolutional neural network. Also, when you have many images, remember to put dropouts if you're having issues with training. Although dropouts are a double-edged sword, it can prevent it from learning, further or it can do the trick uh you just got to see what works for the convolutional neural network in the end you do what works but the predictions are the most important uh, they're just as important as your uh accuracy and loss for validation and training because if it's biased and it gets all of them wrong it's no good but you got a little bit of a high of a validation loss, but it gets all of them correct and everything else is good on the metrics, then that is just completely fine. Okay, guys. Um, I know I said I was going to deploy on uh, SageMaker, but I decided uh, to take a break. Okay. Uh, thank you, guys. Stay tuned for my next video. I haven't decided what we'll do next, actually.